2. The Resurrection of Lazarus As this company of some forty-five mortals stood before the tomb, they could dimly see the form of Lazarus, wrapped in linen bandages, resting on the right lower niche of the burial cave. While these earth creatures stood there in almost breathless silence, a vast host of celestial beings had swung into their places preparatory to answering the signal for action when it should be given by Gabriel their commander. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I am thankful that you have heard and granted my request. I know that you always hear me, but because of those who stand here with me, I thus speak with you, that they may believe that you have sent me into the world, and that they may know that you are working with me in that which we are about to do. And when he had prayed, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Though these human observers remained motionless, the vast celestial host was all astir in unified action in obedience to the Creator's word. In just twelve seconds of earth time, the hitherto lifeless form of Lazarus began to move, and presently sat up on the edge of the stone shelf whereon it had rested. His body was bound about with grave cloths, and his face was covered with a napkin. And as he stood up before them, alive, Jesus said, Loose him, and let him go. All, save the apostles with Martha and Mary, fled to the house. They were pale with fright, and overcome with astonishment. While some tarried, many hastened to their homes. Lazarus greeted Jesus and the apostles, and asked the meaning of the grave cause, and why he had awakened in the garden. Jesus and the apostles drew to one side, while Martha told Lazarus of his death, burial, and resurrection. She had to explain to him that he had died on Sunday, and was now brought back to life on Thursday, inasmuch as he had no consciousness of time since falling asleep in death. As Lazarus came out of the tomb, the personalized adjuster of Jesus, now chief of his kind in this local universe, gave command to the former adjuster of Lazarus, now in waiting, to resume abode in the mind and soul of the resurrected man. Then went Lazarus over to Jesus and, with his sisters, knelt at the Master's feet to give thanks and offer praise to God. Jesus, taking Lazarus by the hand, lifted him up, saying, My son, what has happened to you will also be experienced by all who believe this gospel, except that they shall be resurrected in a more glorious form. You shall be a living witness of the truth which I spoke. I am the resurrection and the life. But let us all now go into the house and partake of nourishment for these physical bodies. As they walked toward the house, Gabriel dismissed the extra groups of the assembled heavenly host, while he made record of the first instance on Urantia and the last, where a mortal creature had been resurrected in the likeness of the physical body of death. Lazarus could hardly comprehend what had occurred. He knew he had been very sick, but he could only recall that he had fallen asleep and had been awakened. He was never able to tell anything about these four days in the tomb, because he was wholly unconscious. Time is non-existent to those who sleep the sleep of death. Though many believed in Jesus as a result of this mighty work, others only hardened their hearts the more to reject him. By noon the next day this story had spread over all Jerusalem. Scores of men and women went to Bethany to look upon Lazarus and talk with him, and the alarmed and disconcerted Pharisees hastily called a meeting of the Sanhedrin that they might determine what should be done about these new developments.